Hello, hello, and welcome again to a Beatles show called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly program in which we talk about what's going on news-wise in the world of the Fab Four. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show, and you might know me for another program that I host called Every Little Thing, which is a syndicated Beatles show around the country and around the world. And I'm being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner and Monkeys Examiner and Weird Al Yankovic Examiner. And who knows what will follow next week? His name, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we have uh, a number of things to talk about on the show this time out, uh, mainly about George, but uh, quite a few interesting items, too, about Paul McCartney. Yeah, it's actually nice to have some stuff about George to talk about, because it hasn't happened very often recently. Yeah, well, we've been waiting for something, some kind of news for so many years about uh, CDs, remastered CDs, for especially Dark Horse and Extra Texture. And just recently, we had learned through Danny Harrison on his own Facebook page for the new number two, his band, that there'd be a box set coming out called the Apple Years, 1968 to 1975. And so once we heard about that, and there wasn't an official word for quite some time, but uh, recently we heard that there was going to be this box set, and we know about the contents, what will be on it, and we discussed that in our last show. So now we have some more news to tell you, because first of all, um, there is a uh, George Harrison tribute concert, that's about to take place, and that will be on September the 28th. But um, the the big news about that concert is that it's been expanded. Why don't you right. talk about that, Steve? Right. It got moved to the Fonda Theater in Los Angeles from the um, El Rey, uh, from the smaller El Rey Theater. The El Rey, I think, held about uh, seven seven seventy five, I think, or some, somewhere in. 750, somewhere around there, um, and the Fonda is over somewhere over a thousand. I forget exactly what the number is. It's not huge, but it's it's going to be a little bigger than it, than it was. Mm-hmm. And more tickets went on sale today. Today being Wednesday, so you know that's a good thing for anybody that you know. Uh, and I had heard it, number one, the tickets at the El Rey had sold out. And I had heard about some people that were really uh, anxious to go, and I guess there and there was actually some tickets actually sold pretty high for you know for the show. But in any event, some some lower priced thirty five dollar tickets went on sale today, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I don't know if they're still. I haven't checked. Uh, I didn't check before we started the show. See if they're still available. I would think by the time the weekend comes around, they're not going to be. Because it's not that big of a place. I'm, I'm looking up. Uh, um, I can't imagine it not selling out in one day. Yeah, <laughs> let well, alone an hour. You know, the Fonda, the Fonda is 1,350 people. Okay, so that's that's not huge. That is a, a double more, double the capacity of what they had before. So, mm-hmm. and, and I think uh, we've we've talked about who all is going to be in the show. It's a it's a very eclectic lineup. Right. You know, with Brian Wilson, Nora Jones, uh, Ann Wilson of Heart, um, Weird Al Al Yankovic, who I realized, you know, I was, at first it didn't hit me, and it should (laughs) have, because I'm, you know, I write about Weird Al, um, what he would be doing there. But, and everybody knows that he did a great parody called This Song is Only Six Words Long of of a George song. So that. Got my mind set on you. Right. So that's pr- I'm guessing that's probably what he's going to do. Yeah, um, I got an email too about that. Like, how could you not know what he's going to do? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so that's going to be that's going to be fun. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and there were rumors that special guests are going to show up. As I wrote um, the other day, um, one of the rumors says that Stevie Winwood will show, but that's completely you know no, there's no confirmation on that. So we'll see. But, mm-hmm. Sounds like it's going to be a great show. Um, I wish I was going to be down there. Unfortunately, I'm too far away to get there. But that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun. And also, we should point out that this concert is a charity concert. Yes, it is. It will benefit the Neighborhood Fund 
to benefit Sweet Relief. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, to promote all these activities, the box set coming out and this tribute concert, um, a number of artists are going to be appearing on Conan O'Brien's show next week. Right, and, including Danny Harrison. Right. And I think Nora Jones is one of the artists, too. So, yeah, I believe so. I believe you're right. Yeah. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting because they didn't reveal the full lineup um, of who else who all was going to be there. So that's going to be that's going to be an interesting uh, little thing. Yeah, and uh, Conan O'Brien's show. For those that don't know, it's on TBS, and it airs Monday through Thursday. The time is 11 p.m. Eastern time. So each show will have a performer doing a George song. Kind of reminds you of what happened during the Beatles' 50th anniversary when David Letterman had an artist come on each night and they would do a Beatles song. Mm-hmm. And Sean Lennon was actually there with the Flaming Lips doing one song. Right. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a similar approach to uh, take notice of the Big George Week coming up next week. And right. also, uh, you had written an article about a contest going on. Yes. They are uh, the... Uh, Olivia and Danny, along with Gennaro TV, um, and Universal yeah, uh, Music. is um, holding a contest for a video for What Is Life, and the the link is on um, my George Harrison Examiner page. Um, but they've got a, a competition going for the for people to make a, a video for What Is Life, and it will become the official video, and it will be used on. Harrison website on their Facebook page and on on YouTube, right? So and the the top five the winners top, get copies of the yeah, box set. They get a box set, right? And the number one, the person who's chosen number one, gets to have the video chosen, becomes the official video, like you said, and also receives five thousand dollars. Right. All right. So lots going on there on the George scene, and as far as the box set is concerned, we have a few things to talk about. First of all, I should say that. I was given uh, a chance to hear the songs digitally. I haven't received the box set yet. Mm-hmm. So this all happened yesterday rather quickly, and um, I didn't get to hear the whole thing. So I just want to give uh, my opinion of what I did hear. The most important thing for me to listen to first, what I went to quickly, were the bonus tracks, and I also wanted to hear uh, Dark Horse and Extra Texture. So uh, that's exactly what I listened to. And I will tell you that um, Dark Horse, you know, this is very difficult to judge. These are my ears only. And I was listening through MP4s, which is not going to be the exact same sound quality as a CD. So, And I was listening with my headphones on, listening very carefully, and I wanted to see if there was any difference between the CDs when they first came out. And I think that there was some improvement over Dark Horse. I didn't. I wasn't totally blown away with what I listened to. Mm-hmm. I thought, in particular, there's a big difference between uh, the sound and the way it was. The, the the two albums, Dark Horse and Extra Texture, were mixed. I always felt that when Dark Horse first came out on CD, I didn't have a problem with it too much. I think it sounded pretty bright. But the problem with Dark Horse. Compared to other albums, and every album is mixed and mastered differently, but I think Dark Horse doesn't have the full dynamic range. For me, anyway, it's, it's a very mid rangey kind mm-hmm. of album, at least to my ears. So what I pointed out, what I, what I was able to get from listening to the Dark Horse album, there are certain times when uh, guitar parts, especially on Harry's on Tour and Bye Bye Love and uh, Simply Shady, those those particular songs... They, they had a bit more bite to them. But I didn't notice this overwhelming, you know, improvement in the sound. Again, these are MP4s. So I'm not telling people not to buy this. I'm just saying that, at least for right now, and it's really unfair of me to even make a judgment till I, till I listen to all the CDs. But um, Dark Horse, you know, I never, like I said, I never had a problem with the original CD. Mm-hmm. So I didn't feel like there had to be this vast improvement in the first place. But... At the same time, it's not a great sounding in terms of the way that it was mixed, for my ears anyway. Mm-hmm. Extra Texture, on the other hand, needed a lot of improvement because it always had a very muddy sound to it. But you had so many different sounds and lots of layers of sounds. There's a lot of songs on Extra Texture that, to me, stylistically and production-wise, sound more like they belong on All Things Must Pass. You know, songs like You, which actually right. date back to 1971 because George 
wrote the song originally for Ronnie Spector, so the backing track has that early, earlier 70s sound. Um, yeah, it has, that, a spec- it has a definite Spector sound to it. Yeah, and um, the answers at the end has a very, it's more, it, it belongs, it could fit on All Things Must Pass, mm-hmm. the same way that World of Stone could. All these heavy songs, these songs that have far more sound, more orchestration, more synthesizers, more of a heaviness to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to think of it more, you, know, you, you could call it the specter wall of sound if you want to, more of that cathedral type sound okay. that I'm used to hearing in All Things Must Pass. And I love that sound. You know, I'm not one of those anti-Phil Spectre people that, that uh, go on saying that he overproduced. I think it worked for All Things Must Pass. And at the same time, I love George Harrison's sound when it's just him and an acoustic guitar, bare bones. I love mm-hmm. that sound too. Uh, but Extra texture really, in my headphones, sounded fantastic. And in particular, the songs that I mentioned, You, The Answers at the End, sounded phenomenal. This guitar can't keep from crying sounds wonderful. All of it, because there's so many more sounds to listen to on Extra Texture. Everything that was on side one, Ooh Baby and World of Stone, sounded phenomenal. I really liked Tired of Midnight Blue, which had a bit more bite to it. Great Cloudy Lies, another one of those songs that has a heavy sound to it, and it's a slow song, and it's a plotting, you know, beat mm. to it. Those songs really work well as far as uh, the remaster is concerned. So I noticed a definite improvement in the sound quality, and that's just from MP4s. That's not even counting hearing it on CD. So okay. I really liked what I heard there. Okay? I'm looking forward to hearing that a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, bonus tracks. The Wonderwall music bonus tracks in the first place by the Remo Four, which I've heard before. I have a CD of it. It came I, out. I've heard it. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah, and you can you can hear a lot of this stuff on YouTube anyway. But uh, in the first place is a really good song that was recorded the same time as Wonderwall music, but it wasn't put into the film. But the Remo Four are kind of an important part of Wonderwall music in the first place because they they helped out on some of the rock tracks that were on uh, the soundtrack CD. It was, by the way, uh, in the first place, was on the director's cut on the Blu-ray that was released this year. No, I wasn't aware of it. So they wove it into the director's cut. All right. But in the original release, it wasn't in there. Right. No, you're you know, you're right there. I just wanted to, because I know somebody's going to say, no, 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 it was in the director's cut. And I just wanted to, you know, add that in. Yeah. But the Remo 4 have, uh, you know, a bit of history with the Beatles because um, Brian Epstein actually managed them. Mm-hmm. And um, at one time, Billy J. Kramer fronted them. Right. And um, there's a few tracks on, on the uh, soundtrack where they're backing up other musicians on uh, Party Seacomb in particular and Cowboy Music. And so they played some part in the overall sound and in some of the recordings on Wonderwall Music. Mm-hmm. So that's a nice bonus track to have. What I like about that, and you'll probably say that this is a dated sound, going back to when we were talking about one wall music before in our previous show but that particular song has that very i don't know how you describe it it's got a piano sound that's very much kind of like um a hollow distant sound Mm -hmm. with a bit of reverb i suppose i don't really know if that's what was applied you know you need an engineer to to discuss this better than i can but um a similar sound like what the beatles were doing with sexy sadie on the piano and also, I could hear that kind of sound being used on Jackie Lomax's album on the piano. It's a very similar sound that, that I tend to date back to this time. But I love the sound of it anyway. Mm-hmm. It almost gives it a little bit of a haunting feel to it. There's the alternate take of the inner light. And it's really interesting to bring this up because when we discussed this before, I had a feeling that it would be the same backing tracks as what was used on the Beatles recording. And to tell you the truth, I'm really not sure. It sounds so much like the same backing track, but at times it does sound different because at the very end, those three notes that you hear that end the song, the ones that go da da da, da da da, da da da, that last note, all that all those times is sustained longer, so it sounds a little bit different. So I'm not totally certain that this take is the same one. They, they are calling it an alternate take, but it certainly sounds like it could be the exact same one that mm-hmm. the Beatles used. 
And at the very beginning of, of the track, you do hear George. There's studio banter that you get to hear with George instructing the Indian musicians and kind of singing a line of what he wants, which I found rather interesting. Mm-hmm. And then there's an instrumental called Almost Shankara, which was not used in the movie. And we, both of us, are not certain whether or not George Harrison wrote this or not, because we don't actually have any liner notes. I just have the audio to right. work with here. So, And it sounds like something that would fit right on the Wonderwall music the soundtrack anyway. It's five minutes long. It's an instrumental loaded with all kinds of Indian instrumentation. Sounds wonderful. Sounds just like so much of what's on that album. So they all fit really well, and it's nice to have bonus tracks for Wonderwall music. I must tell you, I didn't listen to Living in the Material World or All Things Must Pass. My main concern, just to get ready for the show, was to listen to, to Dark Horse and Extra Texture. So uh, I did listen to Deep Blue, which is a bonus track on Living in the Material World. It was when the album was remastered to begin with. And I wanted to hear that just because I love the acoustic guitar sound right. of that song. And it is, you know, as clean as a whistle. <laughs> I've never heard the song sound better. But to tell you the truth, when Living in the Material World came out as a remaster, I don't see how you could ever improve on the sound of that. That was an album that really needed to be remastered because the original CD was very, very um, muddy sounding. Mm-hmm. And they really cleaned it up. So I didn't get to hear the tracks on that album. I did try to listen to a few of the songs from All Things Must Pass, only because I wanted to check to see. If you remember, Steve, when All Things Must Pass was remastered, it really the, it was mastered at a very loud sound. Right. And some people love that. It gives more power to the songs. If you listen with your headphones on, it might be very difficult to listen to because there's so much sound. Yeah. You know? But um, it really did sound pretty loud when I was listening with my headphones to a few of the tracks. So I don't know if they made any adjustments. It doesn't sound like they did. You know, from what I had heard when, before the, um, when the press release came out, even the CDs that were remastered before are supposed to be remastered again. I really can't say for sure if that's the case with All Things Must Pass or Living in the Material World. Again, I concentrated on Dark Horse and Extra Texture. But um, I can tell you Deep Blue is the best <laughs> thing I've ever heard. It sounds absolutely wonderful. And um, I did listen to uh, the bonus tracks on Dark Horse, I Don't Care Anymore, which sounds pretty close to the way it sounded on my 45. I mean, okay. it's very clean, but it wasn't a great sounding record to begin with. But um sounds very good. And the big the big uh surprise, and it's a delightful surprise, is the alternate take of the song, Dark Horse. Which you got to hear, right? Yes, I, I did. Yeah, it was it came out on Facebook and you can just mm-hmm. uh stream it. It right. really sounds so good. Yes, it did. I mean, um as much as I love the fully produced sound of George Harrison, like I said, I love when it's just acoustic guitar. And it's him with his voice double-tracked. And the instrumentation is just great without having a backing band right. there. And it just works so well. There may be some people listening to that that might prefer that over the, the release version. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw some comments on Facebook saying exactly that. Some people like that better. But, you know, yeah, that, it, was, it, it, it was that kind of stuff. I mean, there's been, I mean, the early take CD was that way, the... Oh yeah, you know the old bootleg songs for Patty or whatever it was. You know the different, very different um, um, titles that that came out under. That was the same thing. You mean Beware of Apco? Yeah, it was also called Songs for Patty too. But yeah, it's the same. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, those were great. Those demos were fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, well, this is more of a polished demo. <laughs> It really does sound very good. It was good enough to release just that way, as far as I'm concerned. And then there's the bonus track from Extra Texture, which is This Guitar I Can't Keep From Crying, and it's a newer version of the song. And uh, this leaked out because it was on uh, a special that was on NPR. This version is really nice, and uh, in 1992, George made a demo of it, and this was for Dave Stewart. And about 10 years later, which we didn't know about, until uh, we read about this online. Um, It was updated a bit, and Ringo drums on it, and Danny Harrison plays guitar on it. And um, you can definitely hear George's lead guitar in the very beginning, but there's a real raunchy guitar sound later on, which I'm not sure who plays guitar on that. could be Dave Stewart. I'm not sure. 
we will know, I, I'm sure, once the uh, once we see the liner notes. Right. But um, really sounds great. Sounds up to date, although I still love the original. The original was produced so well. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to have these bonus tracks. I kind of wish there were more. And uh didn't get a chance to see any of the video material, although, as we discussed when we talked about this before, so much of the bonus video stuff has already been released already. But uh, we should know pretty soon, probably by the next show or within the next two shows, about this box set, and we'll talk about it more then. So now we move on to Paul, and we've got two major news items to talk about, one of which, and this just broke today yep. on, on September 17th, it's all about the new deluxe version of New. And uh, you did a great article on Beatles Examiner where you listed all the contents. And Thank basically, well, yeah, it's two CDs and a DVD. It's coming mm-hmm. out October 28th. And uh, why don't you talk about that, Steve? Well, they're going to, it's three discs, you're correct. Two CDs, one DVD. The first CD is, you know, is, is the CD as it was released, so there's no big deal there. The second one is the is the interesting one because it has it has struggle first of all, which you know was on the Japan version, although uh, a lot of people over here got it. Mm-hmm. Um, but struggle is finally coming out here, which you knew it would. Two outtakes, and I think you know those are the, those are what really interest me more than anything. I think are the outtakes, Hell to Pay, and Demons Dance. Uh, I'm really interested to hear those. And then the four live versions of uh, the tracks he's been playing live, Save Us, New, Queenie Eye, and everybody out there from the Tokyo Dome 2013, which, of course, anybody who's been to any shows since the album has come out has heard because he's been playing them. Right. And then on disc three, disc three seems to be the one that everybody's really interested in because there's something new, which I believe is that film that, they came out shortly after the album was out about the making of the album. Which is an excellent documentary. Which is which is indeed excellent. Uh, and then in it, the interview from Bang and Olufsen uh, from England, um, which, you know, they heard over there but not over here. Actually, actually you could watch that online. At least right. you could when it when it was around the time when it aired. I don't know if you still can. Yeah, but it's, an, it's really an excellent interview. Mm-hmm. It's it's very insightful, and Paul even does um, on my way to work. Mm-hmm. Just him and an acoustic guitar on the show. And then there's um, there's clips from the promo tour, the uh, MGM Grand, the Hollywood Boulevard, um, NBC with Jimmy Fallon, uh, Times Square, London, BBC. I mean, there's all the all those little appearances, which which. Assuming uh, it'd be nice to see if they were complete. I don't know that they're going to be complete on that DVD. There's a lot of content there, but and, and then he's also got the music videos for Queenie I Save Us, Appreciate Early Days, and and all the makings of. Right. So it's really, I mean, you know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting package. You know, of course, I've I've seen people grumbling that you know he's milking it, and yeah, I you really would not have expected this stuff to come out right away so um but you know what can you say it's um it i mean it's a, the the thing is it's got going for it is it's a great album and and you know this isn't a lot of junk i mean this will be you know this is all good stuff or it should be well uh, the thing is the dvd really is what makes it worthwhile for me because uh as you put on your article, this, it's an hour and 58 minutes long. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of material there. What I'm curious to find out is, with all of these concert appearances, are they complete? That's because, what, yeah, that's what I was saying, too. Uh, you know, that's that's the important part. And I, I, I don't see how. I mean, you figured 20 minutes for each of the appearances. The uh, You know, the MGM Grand thing was not a full concert, but it was about... Uh, I don't know, maybe a third of a concert. Mm-hmm. So there's an hour right there, you know. And, and Jimmy uh, Kimmel was an hour. Jimmy Kimmel was uh, Kimmel was an hour. Uh, Fallon was I don't remember what Fallon was. Uh, Times Square was about 20 minutes. Shard was about 20 minutes, I think. Uh, you know, so I don't I don't see that all that. The Covent Garden was about 20 minutes. 
I don't see that they're going to be com- they're absolutely complete. But not only that, I mean, the the four songs that he's been doing from new, mm-hmm. he did those four songs in Times Square. He did those four songs in London at Covent Garden. Are you going to hear the same four songs over and over in every concert? It might get a bit monotonous. Right. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that's edited. But mm-hmm. the the good thing is, is that it, those of us who follow everything that he does, we go online, we go on YouTube, we go on Paul's website, we try to, to see every appearance that we can. It's nice to have it all packaged on one DVD instead of just going all over the place. Right. So, um, you know, I appreciate it for that, for that reason. And to have the videos put together here for, uh, for four songs, including Appreciate being one of them, um, and also the making of the videos, which we've been seeing, and just recently the, the one for Early Days was posted online and on Paul's website. It's nice to have all that in one package. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, it really is. By the way, now that you're bringing up Early Days, um, I was able to track down... Uh, a couple of a couple of people had asked who the who the blues guys were uh-huh. playing with on early days, and I was able to track that down. I don't think anybody else did. And the names were uh, Al, Al Williams, Misha Lindis, L I N D E S, Rory Gaines, Henry Harris, Dale Atkins, Motown Maurice, and Little Poochie. I believe Little Poochie is. Uh, I have heard of him. The other guys are not familiar to me, but that the DVD should be interesting. So. Yeah, I'm wondering if you're going to, you probably, are you, are you going to get the whole jam session from early days? Because that lasted about 30 minutes. Yeah, see, there's another, there's another issue. I don't know. We'll find, we'll find out. Hmm. Find out. And the only other thing that I question is that when New first came out and Paul was talking about it in interviews, he mentioned this other song title, which still, even including this, is not included. Mm-hmm. And that Secret Life of a Party Girl. Right. Whatever happened with that song? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that now that you mention it. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah. We'll find out. We'll, I don't know. There Maybe there's another collector's edition coming down the line. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> don't laugh. Too much. It's probably, it's probably, uh, there's probably something else in the works somewhere, some hmm. way. I don't know. We'll We'll see. The other bit of news about Paul concerns that song called Hope, and uh, you have confirmed that that is the title now, Hope. Yeah, it is definitely the title. It's not called... Uh, uh, hope for the Future? Hope for the Future. It is called Hope. Uh-huh. Um, that'll be... And i, I got to say, I, and i got to say, I love that song. I mm-hmm. really, really do. I think it's a, just a wonderful song. It, 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 he sound, his voice sounds great. The um, instrumentation sounds great. And I, I saw something on Facebook... Apparently, there's a whole lot of music from that, from in that video game that he's done. Yeah, Rolling Stone had an article and it said there's 50 minutes of music from McCartney. Yeah, and apparently it's already being passed around among collectors. Wow, to what I'm hearing. But um, uh, the you know the the hope song is great. And I hope I get. I hope we not to be make a pun. But I hope we get to hear more of that because. Um, and I would there. There's another thing to probably look forward to. I, I would guess. Well, what was announced was that Hope will be released as a single. Right, but I'm uh, I, I'm saying it would not surprise me somewhere down the line if the whole soundtrack got released. I mean, you know, these kind of things have happened before with him. So. Well, now that it's another week since we last spoke about this song, it really does sound to me like it's it's great soundtrack music. Mm-hmm. I can hear this as the theme to a movie. And it's produced extremely well. Joss Martin deserves a lot of credit for the production on it. And uh, we heard there were 120 uh, musicians in the orchestra. And right. it just has such a full sound to it. And I love it. You know? Yeah, but, I do um, too. I'm, I'm very, very enthusiastic about the song. I think it's a beautiful song. But I do wonder if there will be a full CD, an official one, coming out of all this music. Has there ever been such a thing for a video game, Steve? My son would know better than I would, but, um, <laughs> you know, it really wouldn't surprise me, especially if, you know, the, the demand is there. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I, I believe there has been video game soundtracks in the past, but um, I, we're t- we are talking about Paul McCartney here. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about some, you know, you know, some unknown person, so that would not surprise me somewhere down the line. 
Well, there are two sides to this issue about the music from uh, Destiny, the name of the video game. And that is that on the plus side of things, you're going to have a whole new generation of of uh, gamers who are going to be hearing this music who may not know Paul McCartney that well at all, his music from his career. And maybe, just maybe, it might introduce Paul and maybe they'll become fans to some degree. Although, you know, most of it is instrumental. So, but um, that that alone is a good thing. On the other hand, you know that there are a lot of fans out there that just care about getting the music. A lot of older people who don't care about video games. So, they're going to want a CD of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would think, I would think at some point that we will, that we will definitely um, hear more of this music. But anyway, um, I, I really, I really, uh, I'll go as far as to predict that we will at some point. We will hear more. Okay, so lots going on there on the Beatle front with uh, George and Paul right now, and next week is, you know, the exciting week for the box set and. Uh, Also, all the activity on the Conan O'Brien show, the tribute to George concert, so we look forward to that next, and then all this other stuff from Paul to follow. And there's one more thing that we did forget. Um, For those of you that are in the Los Angeles area, this Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. at the uh, John Varveda store at the intersection of Melrose and Robertson in Los Angeles, Ringo Starr and the All-Star Band will be there. Uh, members of the All-Star Band will be playing, including Edgar Winter, Steve Lugather, Richard Page, and, and others. Hmm. And Ringo will do three songs. And the big news is this is a freebie. There are no tickets. It's free. So I, I can just imagine what that's going to be like. But uh, it's nice. It's nice that Edgar Winter is back, at least for this one time. Yeah, I, I, love, I love seeing Edgar perform with, uh, with the All-Stars. It's great. So, right. Yeah, I would, that that alone would be would be nice to uh, to see. Mm-hmm. So, all right, very good. So that puts the show to a close. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can do so by writing to our email address, which is things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. If you want to write to me directly, my email address is every little thing at att dot net. You can also look at my website. KenMichaelsRadio.com, which has loads of Beatles trivia and interviews with people in the Beatle world. Not only uh, trivia, but special contests, too, which you uh, should take notice of because uh, almost every single week there's some unique prize that I give away, which uh, is brought up on the home page of my website. Again, KenMichaelsRadio.com. People want to get in touch with you, Steve? They can do so how? They can write to me at BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. I'm also on Facebook under my name. I have a, a, a news group called Beetle News and Commentary that is growing by leaps and bounds that uh, you're invited to join. Um, one thing I wanted to I wanted to throw out there um, that we had talked about a couple of questions that we would like to hear from you about. Um, one question that I that I asked on Facebook that got a lot of responses is. Which Beatle book has not been written that you would like to see? And uh, a couple of people have, have answered Mark Lewis, and I was thinking more of books that have not even been, you know, named, you know, something just totally out of the blue. Topics that haven't been approached. Right. It, you know, there's, so there's, there's been some interesting answers there. I won't say them to ruin your, your thoughts, but, um, but anyway, you can get to me through BeatlesExaminer at gmail dot com. You can write the show at uh, Things We Said Today Radio Show at gmail dot com. We would love to hear from you. All right. So for Things We Said Today, I'm Ken Michaels, and thanks to all of you for listening. And I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying, glad to be here again, and glad to talk to you all. And we will see you next time.